Hi, and welcome to this week's look at the major news stories that have been bashing around the markets and causing them to move. And this week, we're going to take a look at the US inflation figures that came out and what impact they had on the market. We'll then have a quick look at the UK inflation figures and see what that did to the pound. Uh, we'll take a look at oil and gold, and then we're going to take a final look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, um, because that's breached quite a major level this week. So, where should we start? Okay, well, the news about US inflation data shakes the market. So, core CPI came out, it was actual was 0.4%. It was against an expectation of 0.3% and a previous figure of 0.3%. So, actually up slightly, which wasn't really what was wanted or expected. Uh, flat CPI itself was 0.3%. Again, an expectation of 0.2%, so higher than expected, in line with the previous figure of 0.3%. Now, this obviously suggest that tight monetary policy will remain longer um, than perhaps previously expected or desired in the US. So what was the reaction? Well, dollar went up and dollar denominated markets seemed to go down. So the euro dollar fell by approximately 0.5%, forming a new low for the year. So good news for the dollar, you would think. E-mini futures on the S&P 500 fell approximately 1.5%, and the E-mini futures on the NASDAQ 100 fell 2% roughly. Uh, take a quick look at what happened to gold. Well, XAUUSD, that's across against the US dollar, that fell 1.8%. And Bitcoin against the US dollar fell more than 3%, in fact, but that's already recovered. Basically, the oil market, though, remained resistant and resilient, and probably more to do with the geopolitical concerns that are happening currently rather than a direct reaction to the inflation data. Let's take a look at the S&P chart. The price is within the ascending channel that's shown in blue, and the price found support at the lower boundary worth noting. A psychological level of 5,000 points may turn to resistance if the price recovers from that lower boundary. Um, the 5,000 level again pretty key that's 50 percent of the decrease points b to c the s p can also be supported by the lower boundary of that parallel channel we can see now the level of 4820 which was previously resistance was broken by bulls on january the 19th could well see that turning to support and then again we also look at the 4850 level which is roughly 50 percent retracement of that a to b impulse so not great data coming out of the States. Markets not doing so well off the back of them. Okay, so off the back of the US inflation data, the following day we had UK inflation data and the cable price at sterling against the US dollar declined after some more positive, more encouraging UK inflation data than we saw from the States. Um, core CPI came in at 5.1%. Expectation was 5.2%, so below expectations, and in fact, in line with a previous figure of 5.1%. CPI itself came in at 4%. Again, we expected a slight tick up to 4.1%, um, but it remains steady with a previous figure of 4.0%. So positive news really compared to what the expectations in the market were. It's still higher than the US, but obviously the main difference is it's not rising as it had just done in the States. So it would say that would ease some pressure on the Bank of England in terms of their tight monetary policy. And Tuesday, we saw the pound fall off the back of it, in particular versus the US dollar, and that continued into Wednesday. In fact, by Wednesday, we were down sort of 1% compared to Tuesday's high. Take a look at the chart. What does that show us? Well, the bears have broken the upward trajectory indicated by the blue lines, and the price is developing within the descending channel, which we're showing in red. The price dropped below 1 spot 25730, which had been support since about February the 8th of this year. Now, if this continues, it could drop to the lower boundary of that red channel, which would equal the low of 2024. Now, bears can see some signs in the chart, apparently, as a long upper shadow was formed on Tuesday's candle, and technical analysis suggests that the median line of the red channel may well act as resistance moving forwards. What we're seeing here is a bit of volatility, that's for sure. So as ever, when you're looking at volatility, don't forget your risk management techniques. Now, with the inflation data we spoke about earlier from the US, we've already sort of indicated what was going on with gold and oil a little. Let's take a slightly closer look. And the gold price has taken a hit whilst crude oil continues to extend its rally. A couple of key points to take away here for each. 
gold failed to clear the $2,032 an ounce resistance and in fact corrected slightly lower against the US dollar and it traded below the short term rising channel but found some support around the $2,020 mark. The oil price, meanwhile, that moved above the $76.10 resistance zone and its key bullish trend line was forming with support near $77.40 on the hourly chart. Gold a bit more in depth now. The price traded as high as we said of 2032, that's 2032 dollars before falling off. It was a move below the 2020 dollar pivot zone, uh, finally testing the 1988, that's 1,988 dollars per ounce zone. It's consolidating roughly around the 1,990 dollar level. And we are seeing a little bit of resistance near uh, 1,998 dollars per ounce. And then after that, perhaps around, if it breaks that, around 2,010 dollars. Above that, we could see a price increase to $2,020, which we know is a bit of a key level, and then back up towards that $2,032 per ounce mark. Support on the downside, where we've got some support around the $1,988 per ounce mark, then $1,980. Below that, we could be looking at a fall down to $1,962 per ounce. Oil, meanwhile, well, we've seen some bullish momentum after it broke $74.30 per barrel. It was a sustained upwards move above the $75.50 mark and $76.10 mark, uh, reaching a high of $78.10 before we've seen this slight correction. There was a bullish trend line with support at around $77.40, an upside resistance at $78.10, $78.80, and the $80 flat mark. Now, if the correction continues, uh, which is fair to say, probably has it's currently around the $75.80 mark. Um, the support that we previously expect around $76.10 may well have gone. And then we'll be looking at $74.30, followed by $73.50. Now, as mentioned earlier, oil increasing whilst pretty much everything else USD denominated came off on the back of inflation does have a lot to do with those geopolitical tensions and concerns. Keep your eyes and ears open as ever a multitude of factors will affect the price of the markets. Okay, we're going to take our last look at a story that's pretty much been headline news and one we can't really avoid, and that's Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has exceeded the $50,000 per Bitcoin a psychological level. Now, these are high risk markets. Cryptocurrencies are very, very high risk markets. And, and in fact, this product is only available to those clients that can be classified as professional clients in many jurisdictions around the globe. But the last time we saw it above 50,000 was back in December 2021. After that, in fact, we saw quite a significant fall over a period of time and it fell to a low of $15,500 in November 2022. But I say, we're now back over that 50,000 level. And why? Well, there's quite a few factors in play here. We are waiting for a halving in Bitcoin. And a lot of market participants believe that after that, there'll be a bullish impulse due to the reduction in supply. We've also seen recently the approval of Bitcoin ETFs along with other cryptocurrency ETFs over in the States, which has provided a little bit of bullish momentum. And despite those figures early in the week in terms of inflation, there is of course still the expectation of easing monetary policy in the future. We did see those inflation figures just drop the price of Bitcoin slightly, but it recovered pretty quickly and in fact has maintained that recovery. Take a look at the chart, and that shows us that the price is in the ascending channel that we can see in blue. Um, technical analysis would suggest that the price has some room to rise towards that upper limit that we can see. So bullish indicators there. However, it's worth noting that the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, you may have seen this on social media and the like, is 79 out of 100, which indicates extreme greed. Now, these fear greed indexes um, would suggest that w when we're in that sort of greed and extreme greed area, we could be looking at a fall afterwards. The RSI is in the overbought zone and is in fact forming a bearish divergence pattern. So again, 
we've got contrary information there, indicators showing us that there could be an upside, but also indicators showing us that there could well be a downside. Exceeding the psychological level can result, it's worth noting, in false breakouts. In fact, we saw that this was the case with a short-term decline in price when we broke the support at 40,000 historically. That's $40,000 a Bitcoin. So that would indicate we may see a correction in the short term. The point here is these are extremely risky and extremely volatile markets and make sure your risk management techniques are absolutely top notch if you want to trade these cryptocurrency markets. We wish you luck with your week trading ahead. Bye for now.